Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today on this Friday, including John McKeechee, standing by, sponsored by Passant Motors, BC's most trusted car dealership located in the heart of Surrey, with great financing rates, guaranteed approvals, and open seven days a week. Learn more at Passant Motors, B A S A N T Motors. Uh, dot com. John McKeechee is a Canadian broadcasting legend, longtime an anchor on BC TV oh, yeah. slash Global. Also worked at CKNW, uh, Team 1040, I think CKDA uh, in, in Victoria. He also wrote for the province, and he joins us now. John, thanks for doing this, my friend. How are you? I'm good, guys. Good morning. How are you doing? Very good. well. What are you up to th th these days, John, for people who don't know? You look great, by the way. Well, I work... Uh Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> uh, the uh, I, I guess the strange thing I, I, I I'm Sagittarian. What I'm not a big zodiac guy or whatever, but uh, apparently Sagittarius are loyal or what. I never thought I'd have the careers that I've had. And um, I had a sporting goods store when I was a kid in Victoria, which is basically the Victoria version of Sparling. It's called Hawking and Forbes on Yates Street in Victoria, not far from the Czech Studios. And then I. Um, Ended up uh, working in Phoenix for the uh, Roadrunners for a year. That's another story altogether. Came back, went to university, was going to go back. Uh, I, I got a summer job in radio one year. And um, what happened, I came to quit in September to go back to university. They said, we don't want you to quit. We like what you're doing. So I tell people my summer job lasted 38 years. So... Uh, <laughs> Fast forward to when I was at Team 1040, and I, then I went to the other station across the street, which yep. was part of the Force Empire, and that's the familiarity with the NW years. And um, I signed a long-term contract, and halfway through the contract, the station folded. So um, in the midst of all that, I was doing commercials for a handful of clients, and several months after the demise of the station, I got another client who said, hey, would you do a commercial for us? So I did it, and... Uh, that just to try and speed the story up, it led to a bunch of just you know thank you lunches and so on and so forth. Why don't you come work for us? So you know the name Marty Zlotnick. Yep. So his dad yep. Harold Zlotnick started this company called Zlotnick Lamb, ZLC Financial. And this is my 16th year, and I just love it. And yeah. um, one of the people I want to meet, aside from seeing Rob Germain again, I was corresponding with a year ago, one of the people I want to meet uh, works for you guys is Jan Spencer. Yeah, so this yeah. is a hello to Jan and hope I get to meet her. <laughs> uh, Rob Germain, for people who don't know, is our boss here at, at Check. I wanted to ask you this, uh, John, I don't know if you saw the start of the show, but d did you work for the Griffiths family at NW and BCTV when at the same time they own the, the Canucks? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when I when I worked at CKNW, um, and thanks for the Hall of Flame part, Hall of yeah. Fame plug, by the way. But the guy yeah. that should be in next is Al Davidson. I know it's a long story. Yeah. No, but I yeah, no, they, they, the Griffiths family. It was Western Broadcasting, which became Western yeah. uh, International Communications, and uh, that they wholly owned um, BC uh, CKNW. Pardon me. I think they owned sixty percent of BC TV. Yeah. And um, so then I, I was at NW for two and a half years and then went to um, actually three years, I guess. And then went to BCTV and um, when they uh, when they owned, um, as I say, 60 yeah. percent, then I eventually bought all of it. Yeah. Hey, McKeach, the, the reason I bring it up is because, you know, you had your, yourself and in particular, Neil McRae and, and Al Davidson, both of whom have, have less, uh, left us. God, God bless them. But they would criticize the connection. You never heard you never heard anything about the Griffiths family putting the reins on everybody. I think they got the entertainment aspect a lot better than other people. Absolutely. Well, Frank Griffith Sr., he was one of the finest men you'd ever want to meet. And even, mm -hmm. even for those of us way down the totem pole or the, down the pyramid, as it were, uh, he always had an open door policy. I think I went to see him maybe twice in the Benthall Center and just, you know, mm -hmm. hey, come on in, say hello, and spend a couple of minutes with him and just a nice guy. And uh, to your point, I remember him telling Harry Neal, he says he gives people enough, all of his employees, no matter which, whether it was the radio station or the accounting firm or the hockey team, give uh, people enough rope to make themselves a million or hang themselves. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, when it came to the to the demise of Roger Nielsen, I remember Frank saying words to the effect that he said to Harry, Harry didn't want to file Roger, and he said, uh, well, there's no there's no sense in two people losing their job over one decision. <laughs> John, you could tell stories for days, uh, but going back, covering the Canucks when you did, it's so different today. It's just totally different. Uh, back then, uh, I was watching your uh, BC TV Game of the Week. I told you this on the phone last night. It was so much fun. Back then, we didn't have much in Canucks coverage. But just talk about covering the team back then, how different it was than today. Well, for one thing, in my early years, in 1975, which was my first year, there, there wasn't videotape. It was film. Oh, right. So the, ca- the cameraman would uh, would come to the game and shoot the first. He'd shoot the whole game, but w- I had to take the can of film back yeah. to the studio to get it developed. And so the best we could get would be the highlights of the first period, maybe a little bit of early in the second. But it, it took time to develop a film and then edit it. Wow! And keeping in mind, there's only like uh, what was it about ten minutes of film on any on any any given roll. So it's not like the videotape was consistently rolling. The, the the cameraman had to be had to have a clue about when the puck when the play is going to start. Wow! Well, you see the highlights of goals, and all you see is uh, the, the you know the guy taking the slap shot and the puck going on it, and then the, then fifteen seconds of celebration. So well, it was hardly the highlights, but uh, from a mechanical standpoint, that was one thing. And I used to leave the Coliseum and as I say after the first yep. period. And, go back to the that's the way it was done in the early years the videotape was was certainly a boon after that you know we, we got a ton of text uh, questions in our delaney's okay turn lang lean box you know people identify you with the canucks but people don't realize you were uh, traveled with the white caps i think too the lions it wasn't just the canucks uh, john for you was it no i did the play-by-play for the white caps for a couple of years along yep. with uh producer uh uh Larry Isaac and our director Henry Orozawa, and it was that was a great time covering them. And uh, in fact, I did the first ever Canuck uh, Whitecaps game. It was in Seattle because uh, the boss was in uh, in uh, Europe doing the World Hockey Championships. And um, I remember it was in the Seattle Kingdom, and I had just got contact lenses that year. And um, I think it was 1978. And uh, I had an infection in one of my eyes and whatever. It was really a hassle to get down there and get the eye fixed and get down there and then do it. And then um, at the end of that following year, one of my proudest moments in broadcasting was the uh, Whitecaps had signed a deal with our company to do the uh, uh, six, six regular season games. John Best was the general manager. And so there was no provision to have any television of, uh, of the playoff games. So it was also the same year, the summer of 78, when the BC Summer and Winter Games started. They had a right. the summer game for in Penticton in July of 78. So I had a week off uh, before we went. Uh, you know, instead of taking my regular days off, they shifted the days around. So I had all this time. So I spent a week, and I basically piloted my naivety because I had really no idea what I was doing. But I, I'm solely responsible for, I mean, at the risk of being egomaniacal about it, but I feel very proud of being responsible for getting that game in Portland on the air as one of the highest rated shows in the history of the station, I understand. And the manager said it's maybe one of the best programming decisions we ever made, but maybe one of the worst business decisions. Because I I made a point of having the game televised with no commercial breaks. (laughs) But, but you serve the people, and that's the bottom line, uh, John. Hey, uh, the answer to this question might be uh, Lillehammer 19... By the way, by the way, just as a case okay. of point, this is a, excuse, excuse, this is a case no. of point. This is something yeah. else, I've never told anybody else this either, but uh, they lost that game in Portland, then they lost the back half of the playoff, and they were eliminated. What people don't know is they were if they were favored to go all the way the year before they did yeah. go all the way. That's right, that's right, yeah. right. I had pre I had pre sold the next game, even though it was going to be in Washington. That's where they were destined to go if they'd won their series, and I had pre sold that, but that was going to be on TV as well. So that's one that never came to be. But that wasn't their that wasn't yeah. my fault. That was their fault. Yeah, and, and, and people forget, and even goes on on today that sometimes broadcasters have to be salesmen as well. But Lillehammer '94, uh, John, was that the career highlight? Because you stole the show with those. Uh, CTV broadcast uh, back, back then, in my opinion, anyway. I know there was a whole lot going on in your career, but that was pretty special. Yes, it was, and the guy that's responsible for it, and I take, uh, and me, along with the guy by the name of John Davidson, 
will credit the same guy with their media career successes. And John Davidson would thank him, and I am thanking him here publicly as well, uh, is John Shannon. It was yeah. uh, it was his idea, along with the, the executive producer, Doug Beforth, that I do that gig. And it, it basically was born out of the fact uh, two years earlier in Barcelona where I was doing volleyball, but when all these various sports wrapped up, one of the things they had me do was cover the Canadian athletes in the stadium. And uh, the marathon's going on, which is the last event. And um, two things happened that day. One they know about, one they don't know about. The one they don't know about was I'm walking with uh, my cameraman, Don Metz, who's a fabulous cameraman out of Edmonton, shot a lot of the Grusky stuff. We're walking along the track uh, right down at track level, and I start to walk up the stands, and, and he says, where are you going? I said, I'm going to interview the king. He said, you can't inter interview the king. I said, well, wait until somebody stops me, and the cameraman wouldn't come up there, so <laughs> I didn't bother going, so I just c carried on around the track. Now I'm, at the, now I'm at the end of the track at the far bend, and now the first runner comes in. So now all the cameras in the world are on this, on this lead runner who's got a couple of minutes, or at least you know however many minutes lead he's got on the second-place people in the marathon. And they're panning the track, and they get by the end zone, and, and they see me walking with my cameraman in the opposite direction toward the Canadian contingent. And all the guys on the Canadian truck said, who's that? What's that? It's, it's, so basically, they figured if I could get there with, you know, just of my, of my own volition, if I could do that there, maybe I could do things like that on Lillehammer, which is what led to that, uh, led to that gig. So again, and thanks to John Shannon. Yeah, it was a regular uh, on our show. Yeah. We all uh, people who watch those broadcasts remember you wearing a loose suit. It was it was priceless. Hey, John, before we let you go, are you a believer in what Patrick Alvine and Jim Rutherford and Francesco Aquilini are up to right now with the Canucks? Well, yeah, I mean, basically you have to be. I mean, people calling for them to sell the team it's not going to happen. I mean, you know, they, they've made they made a whack in the real estate aspect of it and all the rest of it. Some of the things behind the scenes I've heard, I was down there about two weeks ago for the first time in ages, and uh, some things are happening behind the scenes on a, you know, I don't know, just just aren't as, uh, as fun as they used to be, and yep. Um, yep. Yep. I don't know whether it's just a communication issue, communication issue or whatever. But by the way, can I just clarify a couple of things? Yeah. Yep. Uh, one of which, one of the reasons I phoned Rick yesterday is because I just got back from a trip to Australia to visit my grandkids, and one of the reasons, one of the things I was going to wear today was this. Nice. Okay, so that. What are we looking anyway, at there, John? So yeah, so ba basically, it's, it's, it's a rugby looking shirt, but it's from it's from a a, a surf life saving club. They're all over Australia, and my kids are eight, my grandkids are eight and ten years old. They're in that thing. And the other thing, the same as you guys, uh, is uh, by the way, the reason I did that was because I sent Rick some surfing pictures, but you guys didn't want to use them, so that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, in terms of the green thing, I figured, well, what? The, I don't have much that's green either, but I do have one thing. Mm -hmm. And I must tell you, this is a replica. It isn't the real thing. I, I have misplaced the original California Seals oh. green and white oh. and away that I designed. Yeah. But there's the green I have. Oh, very nice. Beautiful. So, and this is this is when you worked at the sporting goods store in Victoria, and they had you design those uniforms. People don't know this about you. So there you go. I know you've been talking about it all the time. So the guy, yeah. and one of my favorite stories about it all, Barry Van Gerbig was the guy, the owner that made the decision on this. And I got a hold of him about three or four years ago. He lives in uh, in Florida and Connecticut. And uh, the guy that told me to go talk to him in the first place was the old leather helmeted Charlie Burns mm -hmm. of Boston, Minnesota, yes. and San Francisco Seals fame. So um, there's fodder for future, future thoughts. So we could go yeah. on and on. We could go on and on, uh, John. Yeah. It, it's just tremendous getting you on. Uh, uh, thank you so much for this, and you know, uh, always been a fan of yours. From, from well, way I appreciate back in the day. I appreciate the kind words and. Uh, I tell you what, um, sports are supposed to be fun. When was a draw it's supposed to be fun? It's enter entertainment and fun. Yep. You guys are bringing that to the table every day. So, so keep it going, and congratulations to you guys in check. We learn from the best. Keach, thanks so much. Appreciate thanks, it. We'll McKeech. get you back on. Okay, man. Awesome. Okay. Awesome stuff, buddy. John McKeachy, uh, BC broadcasting uh, legend. When he talked about um, film, 
and how the cameramen used to shoot the. Oh, not yeah, all the games that. were televised. Yeah, you, you would know that. So, um, well, I don't know about film, but they used to shoot the games on, on film. Okay, right. and that's just unbelievable to me yeah. because I often tell the story about how when I first started at Sports Page, yep. we had to deal with videotape. That's so right. you, you tell me that. The, a cameraman would shoot the game, and you'd have to, as a young reporter, after two periods, rush back to the station, run back to edit the highlights. Right, and uh, that I thought was our kick. But we're talking about what John went through was film, film, which be, would be another degree of difficulty. I mean, he designed the Cal. The, the, well, the Oakland Seals first jerseys. Yeah. He he was a he was a broadcaster. He did everything. He dealt with infections. There there there, were, there was a lot there with uh, John McKeechee, Now working with ZLC Financial, one of the greatest storytellers of all time. I went to a Seahawks game with him, and it was uh, it was me, McKeech, and uh, the sales guy. You remember uh, what was the sales guy's name? Oh, for oh, what Se- station? Searson, Searson, Mike Searson. Yeah. It was Searson. It's the first time I've and heard me of him. And McKeech, yeah. he had us in stitches two hours down, two hours back. The best storyteller yeah. in town. Just uh, so beloved in, in, in this uh, market. And that we can't say that about everybody in our, Hall in of our business. 